today, what we're talking about is this big old buzzword. We've been hearing it in business constantly. It's gotten really intense this last year of lead generation, online lead generation. Uh, and particularly with a big surge in interest in LinkedIn, that's been where it's been a lot of the lead generation conversation, but it ties in with conversations about Facebook ads and Amazon ads and Google AdWords and all of these places. So we're going to be talking about lead generation, uh, what you really need to know, particularly if you're not a salesy person, if you're somebody who has an established business but the online world doesn't quite work for you. You're more of a relationship kind of person. You're more interested in belly to belly conversations, but you'd like to be developing more business online in a way that feels good, that feels like you, that doesn't feel like, oh God, marketing marketers, marketing to marketers, as I often say, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking? So I have here uh, Lisa and Eric, my beautiful colleagues. They are hailing from the Southern Ontario area, uh, someplace I miss very much that I used to spend an awful lot of time in. And they have an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous marketing agency that uh, we've been sharing with our clients and colleagues because I'm just so impressed with the work that you guys do. So thank you for joining me. Awesome. Oh, thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have a number of different links, a number of different websites. So we'll put those in the comments as we go along. And I'll go back and edit the description as well to put those in there. But also, please note that I, I tag both Lisa and Eric on their respective pages in the description of this video as well. So that's all I want to say about that. Let's get into uh, chatting about some some good stuff here. So, um, so before we um, actually... I would love to get to know, have the audience get to know you guys during this conversation rather than ask you kind of what your background and how you do. They can look you up. You got an about page, all that good stuff. Let's get to the meat of the matter, which is let's talk about the difference between lead generation and sales. Cause I run into this in conversations with people all the time. They don't know the difference between lead generation and sales. Um, so Eric, would you start us off with that? Yeah, absolutely. I'd yeah. Love to. Um, yeah, it, you know, it's such a common thing that people talk about and we always, we always, I, I personally really, really connect with this and I don't think that sales is sales when it's really not a sale. So what I mean by that is let's say, you know, you say, Eric, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods and I'm really looking for a really great sushi place. I'm going to refer the sushi place that I love and I'm going to say, you got to check out this restaurant. It's amazing. You'll love it. They have a killer sashimi. They have amazing rolls. Here's my favorite roll. Am I being salesy? Not at all. That's sales, right? The lead gen side of that is complete opposite. You know, now it's okay. Well, how do I get someone as the restaurant owner into my sushi place? Completely different, right? Now what you're going to do is you need to build trust. You're going to have to be in front of people when they're looking for sushi and they're Googling for sushi and they're that totally different. That's the lead gen side. Mm, I, I feel like what Tina was talking about, how people want to be belly to belly. Yeah. And they feel like there's the either or. They mm. feel like you're either belly to belly or yeah. you're salesy. Yeah. You're either a relationship marketer or you do lead generation. And they feel I like see. lead generation has no belly to belly relationship personality. Mm. And that's what we do is we bring, we're not just going to grab random people off the street and throw them in the sushi restaurant and say, Hey, I hope you like this. <laughs> we do all the legwork to get those people who love sushi, who love Toronto, who love the culture, who love the type of sushi there. And then yeah. your job as the business owner is to do what you do best, which is serve the pants off people and build those relationships. Serve but the sushi off people. Serve the sushi pants off people. And sushi pants? Sushi pan I, maybe that's a thing, right? It probably is. Hashtag yeah. sushi pants, let's do it. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's, but people don't get to serve the sushi pants off people because right. they're so busy trying to find those people that want sushi pants yeah. who come few and far between. Mm -hmm. And that's where this whole lead generation didn't work for me. It's too much money. It's too much effort. 
no, 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 no. Lead generation works, works. when yeah. you have people that know what they're doing. Yeah. Like yeah. what drives me crazy is the, you'll learn how to set up an ad in one hour and you'll be up and you'll be making money and everyone makes it sound so easy. Yeah. Right. Right. It's yeah. Not. So it's the salesy part of this is what I'll say it again, marketing marketers, marketing to marketers. It's, it's this whole, um, it sounds like the fitness industry, you know, start a business in 30 days, write a book in a weekend, do, you know, start a podcast overnight, generate leads in your sleep, all of these things, all these things can be done, but there is a quality conversation here. And it's, so it so depends on what you are trying to create both short-term and long-term. It also depends on what you already have in place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's important for us to take a look at what, what is necessary before you start lead generation. Mm -hmm. What do you already need to have in place? Because, you know, for example, I work with a lot of authors and I don't recommend lead generation because all they have is a book. They don't have a product. They don't have a back end yet. They're, they're publishing a book for credibility. And there's a lot you can do with that in terms of book marketing, but there's a difference between book marketing and business marketing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're working with people, what are some of the um, pitfalls that you run into? You know, what, what, what should people have? Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. People come to us and they're like, we want to run an ad to this. And we're like, okay, where's your landing page? Oh, I don't have one. Where's your social account? Oh, I don't have one. Where's your website? Oh, I don't have one. What are your products? I only have a book. Okay, then what? If no one wants your book, where are we going to take them? Because lead generation is not a once and done, throw up some ads for 30 days, make you a million dollars and all no. you go. It is an ongoing process it's an evolution. that only gets better and better the longer you stick with it. Yeah. So you have to have that long-term mindset that everyone's comfort level is different. So for me, yeah. for me, I'm okay to spend $500 one month and mm -hmm. $500 the next month and have zero sales knowing that in the third month, I'm going to make two, three, four thousand dollars in sales, or I'm going to make that thousand dollars and five, no you know, yeah. yeah, no, I'm okay to hang with it longer. Yeah. Knowing that I'm building relationships. Other people are like, if I spend $500, I want $500 back that same day. If I spend $5 today, I want a $5 sale that day. And most business doesn't work like that. that let's face it. It really doesn't work like that. You have to test. You have to find out what people want, what lands, what works, what doesn't work. And you can only do that by doing it. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. I don't want to waste your dollars testing. I want to take your ad spend dollars and go. So you've got to know clearly who you are, what you do, what you offer, and have somewhat already established of a brand, of mm -hmm. a business, mm -hmm. of a tagline, of a voice, of a message, of a product that you've somewhat trialed and run through on people. Yeah. And I like to say on like Facebook, for example, you people got to see you, you got to go live. You got to be serving and giving and showing up and being visible. Right. You're like a ghost. And then all of a sudden you're like, buy my shit. People are like, exactly. Who, 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 are, who are you? You know, why, why are you here? What are you doing? Particularly if it's a personal brand, yeah. I do you think you have a little bit more leeway on a product than a personal brand. Like if, you know, if you suddenly see, I see new products pop up in my Facebook feed all the time. Right. That, that, um, that comes more down to if it's a product, you really want to talk about the pain points, right. And the benefits, why you, why are you different? It's, it's, very similar. It's just when you're a personal brand, it's about you, right? People Trust. are buying right. you Trust. versus the product of buying the product, right? Why should I buy this product over that product? Here's why. And the product is the experience. Yeah. Like we write really right. good about the, nobody cares that the drill can drill into the hole in three seconds flat. And like people care that if I'm going to do a DIY project, I'm not going to kill my child when the playground system comes falling down on them because this drill works so good, right? Or my honey's going to love me because I get this right. 
I get this thing done in a day yeah. as opposed to, you know, a year because I can't figure my stuff out. Yeah. The product is the experience. The service is the experience too, but it's more the experience with a person. So you yeah. Google, so people see you, they feel you, they know you, they understand you. Yeah. So in both cases, it is a storytelling experience. You guys talk about this on your website. I talk about it all the time. And in, in my work is that, you know, what is, what's the story that you're telling? What's the journey you're taking people on? And is it, but yet, even if you're telling a personal story, the story really isn't about the storyteller. It's about how it relates to the people that you're talking to yeah. and what's, what's important to them. It's creating that connection. Honor. All storytelling is, is the purpose is to create connection and to draw people in, into you. Right. Yes. Um, and so I think that, um, the, the preparation of that, where you're talking about, do you already have something proven? I think a lot of, um, newer entrepreneurs get scared by this because they have had all these messages that, oh, if you build authority by writing a book, or if you, you know, suddenly are become a coach we'll talk i'll talk about that another time um but uh <laughs> but but really you know what are you good at and there's a little bit of a chicken or egg thing that happens when you have don't have a proven track record yet mm -hmm. uh of doing that kind of thing and i think that's where you know building a network and building referrals a lot of the relationship work, the podcast guesting, we help people with the, certainly the book side of things can help with all of that, but it has to be paired with all, all kinds of other things. And I know that, you know, you guys have a full service agency. So some of these things, you know, the website building, the storytelling, the branding, all of that, if someone's not ready for lead generations, you know, you got to back it up and, and help them with all of those things first. Mm -hmm. But what it really comes down to is, can you deliver on what you say? Yeah. And being realistic. Like if yeah. you don't, Attention. if you don't have all that figured out, but you know, this is going to work, you, you, you know, you're going to follow through, then be realistic that the first two or three months that we're driving yeah. leads to you, we're doing that figuring out process for you which is worth every penny because that it might take us three months mm -hmm. it might have taken you three years so even though maybe oh you're not definitely sales even though your your roi isn't sales yeah. it's figuring out what's landing with your audience and you're getting more clarity in the process so it shouldn't totally hold you doing it either way it's a win-win it's just you got to be realistic with what is that win because everybody goes to money in their pocket. That's the only thing that they say makes it work or doesn't work. But you, you got to change your mentality when it comes to that in the generation. Yeah. And, and being realistic with what is that lifetime value of the client, right? We get that a oh. lot. They don't realize it that, okay, yeah. you might work for, with us for three months and say, you know, oh my God, I haven't had a sale. But then three months later, you might have... 50, 100 sales that happened because that person followed you. And then when they decided to actually buy whatever you're offering, you were the one that was there from the beginning six months ago when they had that thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to play in my backyard. I'm going to do a landscaping job. Well, you don't just flick a switch and go, oh yeah, I'm going to invest 30K in my backyard. Right. It's a six month, 12 month process, yeah. right? We had a lot of that with this current state of, as we're filming this, we're still in the middle of yeah. pandemic and everyone's like, right. shut down my ads. I'm done. I can't run ads. And I'm, we're like, wait, what? Why? And they're like, no, 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 nobody's doing nothing. Nobody's buying nothing. Nobody's like, shut her all down. So not true. Right? Yeah, and not true. Too, what's going to happen if you all of a sudden disappear and then you all of a sudden want to reappear again? Yeah. Yeah. Then you're messing like with people's people heads. Are spending yeah. time in front of their social media, yeah. in front of their computer, researching, planning. You don't want to run ads? <laughs> Says who, right? So again, right. you gotta think about what's the end game, what's the end goal. You know, as you said, that lifetime value, they might not be ready today to buy right. your service or buy your product, but six months from now, they may be yeah. two months. Exactly. Months yeah. It, and it's a whole thing about, you know, sticky branding, 
right? People do remember things. They're more likely to look things up that they've seen in the past or they've heard in the past or that have been endorsed by other people that they do trust. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you have to, you do have to kind of stay up. You don't do all the things, you know, I can hear some people, you know, you know, oh, I know overwhelm and I've been there. Yeah. You know, but it, if you've already got an ad campaign going and it has been producing results, it's the people that I've seen in the last six months as we've been dealing with this pandemic who have really doubled down, pivoted appropriately, depending on their their industry mm -hmm. and really made it even more about relationships, even more about serving people, even more about being helpful that have done really, really well. You know, I know you guys have seen an expansion in your company. We've seen an expansion in our business um, because we're in a position being fully online businesses. We're used to doing business online um, that are in a position to help companies do things that aren't in person. Yes. And, and that's, and that's, that is something that has been a little nerve wracking for some of the companies that we're working with because they are you know, highly professional and financial companies, private equity, like very sensitive areas. But, you know, so it takes them, may take a little while for them to make the leap. But once you get into a group, once people start to trust who you are and what you're saying, there's a flow that happens mm -hmm. with uh, these lead generations. And people can tell when you're being authentic and when you're not, even when uh, it might be some type of automation or a nurture campaign that may go out automatically. I, you know, I, it's in the storytelling that you guys do is, is so conversational and so transparent. And I think that's what makes the biggest difference in making, uh, what would we normally, you know, marketing or advertising yeah. feel good. Yeah. And that's what we all want. We need to feel good when we see this. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that, and that is knowing your client. Yeah. Taking, like when you hear the word agency, we run a social media agency, we run a marketing agency, we run a done for you agency. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, I remember when you were saying that I was like, I don't want to be called an agency. I don't even want to be associated with that word. Me too. Right. Because it's, yep. it's like a production factory, get you in, get you out, charge you astronomical amounts. Good luck trying to get a hold of somebody. There's no belly to belly personalization. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's the complete opposite of us. We're so individualized. We so deep dive. And I think that's where the best ads come from. When you know your client, you deep dive, you take the time to learn their stories, their brand emotions, and the not so perfect ads tend to do a lot better yeah. than the perfectly makeup scripted in front of my computer, oh, sure. yeah. like the messy hair walking down the street ads people tune into because they're real. Yeah. So you don't and, have to, and they're relatable and they're relatable. You don't have to be anyone. You're not, you don't got to speak like you're not, you just have to be you. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. right, the right people connect to that. Yeah. It comes right? across yeah. it's like, it's like connecting with people that you talk to for the first time. Right. It's yeah. either you're going to instantly feel that, that, you know, compassion or if they're genuine people, or you're just going to be like, no, forget it. Like, I don't, I don't relate with and that's you. okay. And that's totally and that's fine. Okay. That's totally fine. You know, and that's why lead generation isn't a start and stop kind yeah. of initiative. Like you don't ever want to have that. Oh, I'm going to do it for yeah. a month. And then I'm not going to do it for two months. I'm going to do it for another month. I'm not going to do it for another month. Like right. you're not getting anywhere when you start and stop. So I think when you're in that position that lead generation is right for you, have the budget for it. Mm -hmm. How many times you say, okay, you know, let's go. And they're like, I have no budget. Like, well, what's the budget that somebody what might consider starting with? What would be, you know, a good a good range to start with? You know, somebody wants to, you know, what should they set aside for say six month or a year? Yeah, I would say safely you'd want to consider at least five k a month. Five um, k a month. Yeah, that's a high budget for most people. Absolutely. For for, for most small businesses. Um, yeah, that that's a that's a chunk. So even for a starting starting budget, setting that that much money, that would be the expectation that we would have. Yeah, 
just because Interesting. if you're looking at if you, if you round it out based on the work being done but then also the ad budget right and mm -hmm. actually spending to get in front of people i think she wants just to know the ad spend just not, ad spend? yeah or oh, just the ad spend is what i'm talking about five k to work with a, a company that's handling all your shit. no i get that i'm talking well, about the ad spend that. yeah yeah, I we we would start at like five five hundred. Yeah, so I was actually surprised when you added an extra zero yeah. in there. I was like, "What's he talking about?" I'm Ooh. not sure. I think he's gone amnesia for a second. Just, yeah, just add spend <laughs> five hundred bucks. Yeah, and then we would scale it based on success. Based on success, right? And so, yeah, so the five thousand we'll dollar, call it a marketing budget, or you know, that might yeah. be more more what we're talking about here. That makes total sense to me <laughs> because done. there's a lot of done yeah. for you the iteration, the testing, the research, the keywords, the audiences, there's a lot of friggin' details in the back end of that. Um, I, I took a couple of classes on, on Facebook ads because who hasn't? And um, just the back end, the interface oh, yes. was enough to make me wanna go blind. Uh, that is not my world. Yeah, like yeah. we tell yeah. people, we have a team of Facebook ads experts and that is their job to stay current, to stay relevant. Yeah. If you are going to run ads on your own, $500 is a great ad spend to start with. Yeah. You then have to be the one every single day yeah. going in there, looking, testing, tweaking, staying on top of it. Cause you will burn through that. If you don't know what you're doing, you'll burn through that $500 faster than you clicked like yes oh, yeah. to put the ad yeah. on. Well, some of the most successful people I've seen advertise on, on Facebook, um, particularly who are on the service side of things. Um, you guys, I know, have a really fantastic specialty and also working with online businesses, but also working with local companies, uh, everything from local colleges to gyms to medical practices and, and things like that. And I think that's that's really impressive because that's a big gap, I think, in the market is, is those types of, of companies. But, you know, clearly you're able to do both. But I remember kind of in a Q and A session with this person because they very much had an anyone can do it conversation, and it was like, so "How much are you spending on ads on a uh -huh. daily basis?" Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They were spending seven hundred dollars a day on uh -huh. ads. Wow. So, and they had a team doing it. It's the same thing with these major launches when you see all these people's success. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the really important people, you, you know, prominent people, Jeff Walker, classic, right? The big launch, launch guy, fantastic work, amazing work. It will take you six months to a year and 60 grand to run a full Jeff Walker launch campaign, period. Yeah, I, I was so, in that mind and the guy yeah. that I was learning from said, if you don't have $5,000 a day to spend on ads, you're not even playing in Facebook ad land. And I was like, did, did he say, five like, did he say $5 a day? Did he, did he say 50? He said 5k mm -hmm. a day. I'm like, yeah. do this in my seat because we started with $250 a month when we started running ads yeah. to my courses and programs. And, and, but what I like again is why you don't just want to guess and do it yourself is our experts watch it. Mm -hmm. And they're very quick to say, if $500 is your budget, hey, we've already spent like 300 bucks. It's not working. We need to, we need, we need to, we need to pivot. We need to try something different. We need to go somewhere else. Like I said, you can burn through money. So, and that's why people say Facebook ads don't work. No, it's you didn't yeah. know what you're doing and you burn through your money and now you got a bad feeling about that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, even with just building our pages on Facebook. Um, you know, we have some page we built organically. We've got about 200,000 followers and it's a massive pain in the butt because Facebook is constantly changing things. Yes, things mm -hmm. you can say, things you can't say, Facebook jail. Yeah. yeah and advertising is worse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's, there's a lot to it. You know, you've mentioned a couple of times, you know, the value of done for you services. And obviously my company with audiobooks and podcasting, we provide done for you as well. And one of the reasons I decided to go in that direction was a survey I ran on audiobooks when I first started experimenting with audiobook services, because like most people coming out of the consulting world, the coaching world, my first thought was, oh, I'll do a course and people can do it themselves. Mm. And I, I ran, I did a survey with a bunch of my colleagues, about 50 people, 60 people, ran them through it. And there was a question that I put in there that said, which are you more likely to do? A take a course and do it yourself uh -huh. b 
hire someone to do it for you or C, take a course, realize how much it is, then hire somebody to do it for you. And almost everybody answered C and put a note in about that question of thank you for asking this because it actually brought to my attention that this is what I actually do. That's when I decided, you know what, I got to do done for you services instead. Best decision I ever made as a business owner, both because it's been great you know, to develop the company and find out what's needed, but also because it got down to an actual need that people had. That's it. Uh, Necessity. Right? It's yeah. necessity. The people that understand done for you realize that the cost of inaction, that the cost of trying to muck through and figure it out on your own and do, you're not going to do it. Yeah. It's the necessity to move that mission bigger that makes people go, I got to stay in my lane. I, yeah. I, I have no business tinkering around in the back end of a Facebook ads thing. Like I have no business trying to do my own audio book thing. And like, I got to stay in my lane. Yeah. Got to hire the people that make it. And, and usually a done for you service, they're good at what they do. They're not just random newbie developers or like they are the best of the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. why they are done for you because it's like, we get you where you want to go. You know, it's, it's, you don't have the time. You can waste so much money, so much time, so much energy. And I've done it myself, you know, trying to do a lot of stuff myself because let's face it, we're really smart people. We can figure a lot out, just but because you yeah, can it doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean you should. Uh, yeah. And that's hard when you're a type A, you're driven, you're good, you've got yourself Preach. to that point and you're yeah. like, I can do this, like tell me I can't and I'll show you I can, right? <laughs> that's the curse of being really good is that you yeah. can, you can figure it out. You're smart, you're resourceful, you know how to ask for help. Yeah. It's like that badge of like, I'm going to sit here for 27 hours Figure and figure out. this out and then work. for what? it won't beat me right exactly and it's like it's yeah. not a battle you should be entering yeah. into yeah or should you be spending that 27 hours having conversations with people that you could be helping mm -hmm. having them sign on to work with you or bring them into your business or your company mm -hmm. and then having your clientele fund yeah. the done for you services your marketing team your uh, your PR, your, you know, your audio branding, whatever it is that you're doing yeah. so that you don't have to. I, I can't tell you how many people are like, I, I, I have $10,000 and we're like, amazing. And I need your help. Amazing. And then they're like, oh, well, I can't work with you though, because I decided to put this to my book or I decided to put this to, I'm going to speak on stage. I, I paid to play and I'm going to speak on a stage or I'm going on this TV interview. Mm-hmm. The one shot wonder, like there is no such thing as overnight success. Oh no, uh, media I, is so important. Having a book is important. All of these things are important, yeah. but they have to yeah. be in order. Correct. Yeah. Correct. yeah, they need to be in order. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah I Unfortunately, I, I, see, I see it a lot too. I see it a lot too. That being said, um, I just actually, um, uh, this morning wrote a couple of emails that uh, referring some of my close colleagues to you guys because I'm like, you know what? <laughs> they could they could really use to work with you guys because they're at a point in their company. They need to not be doing it themselves, but it doesn't make sense to hire like a single marketing person yeah. because a single person can't do everything on their own. Having the backing of a team is really important. And finding a good marketing agency, as you guys know from being inside the agency, you, you, we've talked about this offline. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on this live today is that I, you know, I only have a few companies that I will refer people to for marketing services. Um, and that's based on my 20 years in business and having been burned and being really very suspicious, very suspicious type A over here. Um, on, on things. And I even, even a, a referral partner of mine today, they sent me some information about information they wanted to, me to put out there. And I sent back to them some feedback. I'm like, you know what, your terms and conditions aren't clear and your disclaimer actually isn't legally responsible for you to say some of those things. So I can't promote this mm -hmm. because my people are going to have questions that I can't answer. Yeah. 
and you're not giving me an opportunity to send them to anyone to answer questions. You just want them to click buy now. And I'm never going to send somebody to a buy now button that's five to fifty thousand dollars without the opportunity for somebody right. to have a conversation. Yeah. Ever. Yes. Because yes. I wouldn't do business like that. Yes. People yeah. don't want to take the time. You have to take the time. Yeah. You have to treat it like it's your business. Like mm -hmm. that business decision is a decision that you would make in your business. And if you don't like being rushed, why would you rush somebody else? Exactly. Why would you give people all the information. You know, it might not seem like a life or death, make it or break it conversation to you, but it may be for that person staring back at the screen. And yeah. we never push our people into making decisions no. or we take as no. much time. We educate yeah. and we take as much time as we need till they feel comfortable one way or another. Yeah, I know. I've seen you do it for yeah. sure. Well, I wanted to see if I could kind of wrap up some last words of wisdom here and circle back around to this whole idea of uh, a checklist or a couple of pieces that people need to actually make online lead generation effective. What are a few things that we really want people to know that they ought to have or ought to work on? And obviously they can reach out to you guys too, or reach out to me um, for, for more. Yeah, that's uh, the few things, yeah. So definitely have multiple offers. So think about how you can take one particular thing and make it three different things, but yet it's still the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, that's that's critical because we get that a lot where you think that, you know, you say this thing's 99 bucks and you think that everyone's going to buy it because you think it's the greatest thing. Well, you know, at the same time, maybe that 99 bucks, instead of saying it's $99, you don't even say anything about price and you turn it on a 10 and say, you know what, I'll give you free shipping. Oh, OK. So there's two offers right there. Mm. So think of it that way. Right. Craft it uniquely. Right. So when you when you put it out there to the public or whoever it is your audience places to go you got places to go and different things to try and and because a lot of people will say it didn't work what would you try i put out 99 bucks nobody bought it it's the price but this thing's worth a million bucks got it so i'd say that's that's number one um number two is make sure this is hard to say like make sure you have proper branding make sure you have something that someone's going to trust so that, mm. you know, we, I always find that we always find that people, people think that people aren't paying attention because they didn't click like, or because they didn't comment. Right. Biggest BS. People are always watching. People are always paying attention. You, you know, you, you, you will probably have the same friends like we do where all of a sudden we won't see friends for six months. Next thing you know, they're like, Hey, yeah, I saw that you had uh, oysters yesterday. Where'd you get yeah. those oysters from? You're like, what? what? Oh, yeah. Facebook. So just remember big takeaway from Eric. They're always watching. <laughs> always. It's true though. Yeah. Always. always. Um, yeah, it's, it's true great. though. It's yeah. absolutely true. And I think that goes back to, your analogy from the beginning of our conversation about, you know, the sushi restaurant as well, you know, you might think about not think about having sushi for three, four, five months at a time, but when you have a craving for it, you know exactly where to go because of that recommendation that you got from a friend or because of the ad that you saw or the coupon you got in the, in the paper or the, um, the recommendations you saw on TripAdvisor, it yeah. sticks with you. And that goes like just what you said, that's sticky branding it's about that branding that stays with you over time anything else yeah I, no matter right. my last thing no matter what no matter what you think is or isn't working stay at it stay at it because you you you're get out of your own way because you're not the one that gets to decide that it's your buyers it's your audience they're the ones who will decide for you so just stay just just stay in your pain lane and keep doing what you're doing whatever that is, it'll, it'll, it'll end up paying off dividends in the long run. Mm -hmm. Cause we Beautiful. see some people give up really quickly. You know, they'll, they'll try for two weeks, three weeks. And then they're oh, like, no, no, you no. Have to help. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta give it, you got like three years they're saying now before you can really say something did or didn't work. I give it six. Months. I agree. I go you know? say, I, I know if I'm going to say yes to running an ad to Minimum. anything, any campaign, any process, I'm like, yeah. I know I'm in this for six months. 
Because yeah. I can't, it's too early to bail on it to say it worked or it didn't work. You don't have enough data. Yeah. And I was going to say, make sure everything matches. Like if you run yeah. an ad and it doesn't look and feel, it looks and feels and sounds one way. And then they hit your landing page or your website and it looks and feels and sounds a different way. That's going to cause an instant. People are going to be like, whoa. Oh no, that, that will cause an instant, instant pivot yeah. to so everything. I yeah. I'm, I'm actually um, in the midst of a, a fitness program right now. And the, huh. you know, the fitness industry, I have a hard time joining programs with it because I'm like, mm, because of the marketing that gets done with that. Oh, and yeah. this company's no exception. I won't name them. Their products are good and you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to show you in 30 seconds how to do something. And it takes you to a 50 minute sales webinar uh, every day, an email that's like that selling a supplement, usually selling uh -huh. a supplement, selling a meal plan. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to give you everything you need. We're going to give you the recipes. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. No, they're going to give you one list of recipes and then they're going to sell you a personalized meal plan every damn day. Yeah. So it's you know, again, this is why this personal connection and taking the time with people and managing expectations is so important, um, particularly in this realm and, and why I know we agree that transparency is so important. So there's lots of places that you can go out there, my dear friends out in Facebook land, where people are going to tell you where you want to hear. Your friends will tell you what you want to hear. Don't ask your friends for feedback on things. Yes. Ask people that you respect mm. that are, are successful for feedback. Yeah. Um, go out and ask three marketing agencies to give you feedback and you know see what the commonality is between the three. And you'll find the intersection of where you're falling down on the job. But when you're talking about doing business with a company, make sure they're willing to take the time with you um, I mean, be respectful of their time. Of course, we don't have all damn day, but, right. you know, right. but nonetheless, that's willing to work with you and is willing to, you know, shoot straight with you and say, you're not ready for this yet. This is actually where you need to be. It's not because they necessarily want to sell you something more. It's because they want your initiative to be successful. Yeah. yeah. 100%. And lastly, I would say have a process in place for follow-up. Because even though everyone thinks lead generation equals automated sales, mm -hmm. and that's Tell the story. Tell the story. There. Okay, so we have this lovely client who we love dearly, and she worked at a gym. She's a nutritionist. Worked at a gym, and people were just giving to her right as part of the package. So she had a ton of amazing at what she does. Ton of testimonials. Ton of success stories. You know, perfected process check, 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 check. Now she's running ads to a webinar, to an application to work one-to-one -one with her. So no longer wants to, wants to do it on her own because ding, sure. ding, ding, helping all these people getting paid X amount at gym. That's how you know you're an entrepreneur when you're like, wait a second. Should I, I can do this better on my own. Shouldn't I get paid more for this? Right. But those pe the legwork was done for those people. The trust yes. was already built. The qualified leads were already there, whether they liked it or not. There were people that were saying to her, I don't even know why I'm in this yeah. office um, with you. I'm here because I have to be in. Console? I don't really want to do <laughs> this. Right. They, they end up being her best testimonials. But now, you know, we, we have over a hundred people that have watched yeah, that yeah. webinar and we're like, you gotta go, you know, but the sales, oh, well, you got to go back to those hundred people. You got to go back and say, Hey, the per the belly to belly, the personalization. Yes. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest thing that made you click into that webinar? Was there anything in there that resonated you? Anything that didn't resonate with you? What are you looking for? What are your worries and your fears about hiring someone like me? Like you, what do you need to know? Absolutely. More to be able to help you instead of the, watch the webinar, do the application, click it, buy it, work with me. Uh, like you can't duplicate a same process now on, you can, but there's more leg work and belly to belly work that has to be done. Yeah. yeah. You got to follow up. So even though everyone leading to you was automated, when it's a service based high ticket, it's high ticket. When it's a service based high, as we talked about high ticket, sometimes there's a conversation that's required. Yes. And when you've got a hundred people that want to work with you and you're, you're the lag in your own way. Cause you don't want to have a conversation. Come on.
That's yeah. a problem. That's I, really shooting yeah, yourself in the you foot. You do this much and you have to do this much. Don't let this be the this much yeah. that makes it not work. Right? You, you, yeah. Yeah. You, you might be missing the office, right? Like you think about the analogy behind that and like the reason why her biggest success at the gym was because she got people into her office. She and then sat down. in that office, they got to know right. her. Right. Relationship. Intimacy. Yep. Like we, Intimacy. You know, we, we all get nutrition. We all get you know, health, we all get that we need to work out, eat better, drink water, but you know, you need that next level is you need someone to tell you how to do it. Right. Yes. You need to trust someone trust enough yeah. to say, yes, I'll do it with you. Yeah. It's not so much. That's at all. very true. There's a lot of choices out there. There's a tremendous yeah. amount of information. How, how much money have we spent on health products, MLMs, training? Oh, cheers like, to that. Yeah. You know, and, and she makes the claim, which is valid. And, and I believe her that I want to be the last nutritionist you ever work with. Yeah. I love and that. I teach you about how to do it for life. Mm -hmm. I teach you how to truly live in tune with your body. I'm like, and then there's a hundred people that need you. Get your butt on the phone. Right? Well, maybe, yeah. So maybe on my next, uh, one of these Facebook lives off to do something on closing. Cause that's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. Which is different. My... Like we said, closing well, is different. different. Lead generation. Yeah. Lead gen and sales. Remember this, not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, also market, you know, your website, your offers, your products, not the same thing as your marketing in your, in your lead generation. So all of these things are pieces of a puzzle. They're like Legos. You're building a house as colorful and as interesting and as weird as you want it to be, but that doesn't mean you don't need the architecture. So this is uh, so if you're looking for more architecture for the, your business, and to help with the marketing, to help with the lead generation. And you really want them, someone who's going to tell you, do this, don't do that. Yep. Talk to Lisa and Eric. That's They'll it. tell you what you need to know. And um, I do trust wholeheartedly that you'll be fully taken care of. So appreciate you guys being here today and joining me as we uh, one of these, one, another collaboration conversation hey. um, here on Facebook Live. And uh, we'll be also sharing this out with our other networks as well. So I'll see you all over the internet. Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. Oh, my pleasure. All right. We'll talk to you soon, guys. Thanks.